uh, Bortle here, back from the LCS 7 event of the online format. This is History Making Tournament, guys. The first ever 3v3 event. We have here today, back to the channel, Gabriel Nets, and we have his teammates as well, Cormac and Hash. So, guys, uh, what was your team called? Um, <laughs> team 1, 2, free. Oh, my goodness. All right, who was 1, who was 2, and who was free? <laughs> oh, <laughs> are, 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 are we saying the whole wrong. story? Yeah, go for yeah. it. Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so basically, there's this uh, online ranking system called Magnitude Rankings, pretty sure. And, like, the last time they pro they posted the rank the leaderboard, uh, Gabe was number one, I was number two. At Cormac's our teammate, so we were like, haha, one, two, three, lol. <laughs> okay, well, there you have it, folks. So, number one was Nets, uh, which is Gabriel, and number two, Hash, and we have uh, Cormac as free. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> And I carried in the tournament, so it was okay. Hey. So, I guess that's my next question. So, who carried the most in this uh, event right here? I think all of us did something yeah, at some point. I think it was all balanced. Like, I think we all had, like, similar records, if you go back to look. We didn't keep track, but I think it's similar. Most of us have been gone, like, x Chu probably. If yeah, I would say so, yeah. It, it's, it's weird, because, like, when, it's, like, two people win a game, we usually didn't finish the game. But I think, like, in I average, think... everyone went, like, x Chu. I think Cormac carried like the first half of the tournament and then like the middle Nets carried it and then Top Cut I just finished every game in like five minutes. Yeah. Oh, wow. So it looks like everyone pulled their weight out pretty evenly. So uh why dinosaurs guys? Uh Tirano. Uh, <laughs> I mean on a more serious explanation than Tirano Gober, it's just because like you basically have like two options this format, right? Because the two real decks are like dinos and dragon -like. Uh, if you're playing Dragon Links, I think every matchup he plays unfavored, because you're unfavored against Dino, and the combo mirror is a 50-50. As when you play Dino, you're favored against Dragon Link, and you can have a good matchup in the Dino mirror if you know how to play it, and you build it properly as we did. So I think it was like the best deck overall, and since we thought it was the best deck overall, we just played three times it. <laughs> yeah, uh, we were gonna play like Rock and Dragon mid, but we decided to play Dino instead. Yeah. Worked out. So you guys were going to play the same deck no matter what? You just had to decide which deck it was? Uh, no. Originally, it was going to be like... I think Gabe was going to play Dragon Maid. I was going to play Adam Emancipator. And Cormac was going to play Dino. But then Cormac was like, play Dino. And we were like, okay. And then we played Dino. Overall, how was this LCS uh, throughout? Because I was told that um, the teammates were in the same Discord. So I guess you were facing your opponent like on Dueling Book, right? But everyone was like coaching each other in the same Discord, right? Yeah, basically. So <clears throat> uh, the idea was that uh, the three players in your team would all be in the same Discord call together. Uh, and then you would use the, the text chat to speak with your opponent about, you know, if you had responses to plays and whatnot. So it was essentially the same as just, you know, being in a, in a voice chat with your friends, as if you're all playing your own individual game. Wow, that's pretty different from the uh, YCSs because you've had a you know actually shout to like player you know C to A or whatever because player B is in the middle. How did you guys do it? How'd you guys coach each other? So I think the the way it was when normally was that <clears throat> game one they usually was fairly similar lengths of the time, so it wasn't too bad. But while somebody was siding for their game two, they would generally just be asking the others how they were getting on, what their plays need to be, and stuff like that. Or like when you had like a hard decision, like. So I, do, I have two options, which one's better, then someone else goes and looks into the game state. I think, like, compared Honestly, to what other teams said, I think we, like, coached each other pretty well. We got, like, yeah, I was going to say, together. yeah, I think I think we handled communication really, really well throughout the entire runs, and I think that was really important. Okay, nice. And it helped out extremely well since you guys used pretty much the same list. Uh, from to my understanding, though, only Gabriel used the list that's on the screen right now with the forty-one cards. So, but the other two players, Cormac and Hash, y'all used um, one card difference, right, from Gabe's list. Uh, extra deck was also a bit different. Yeah, and there's three different extra deck. Cards. Nice. Cause... Well, uh, before we start the actual deck profile, would y'all guys like do some shout outs? Uh, we can start with Cormac. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, sure. So uh, first off, I'd like to shout out uh, all the guys in uh, WAF, which is like our server for like a bunch of our mates. Uh, we had a bunch massive of shout out. Too. Yeah, yeah, a bunch of our guys Massive. had their own separate teams. I think uh, across we all had like the teams and top coach, five teams. it was, yeah. was there, yeah, it was five teams total, and then oh, there were wow. four teams I think that had at least one uh, WAF member in their top cut. So like, we all did pretty well. I think it was a fairly uh, decent weekend. Yeah, I think there was like I think there was like eleven people from the Discord in top cut. <clears or> something <throat> that's, like that's crazy. The, fi yeah, the final had five. The final had five. 
it's, yeah, it's, yeah. Seems, it's pretty bonkers. Uh, uh, next, I'd like to uh, shout out uh, Eman Games, which is my my team. Um, yeah, uh, so we've been doing like pretty well. A lot of our players have been doing well in the online format as well. Uh, so you know, once mm-hmm. once real events are coming back, you know, keep an eye out on us. We're not gone away. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, just uh, the Irish guys. Well, four uh, four Eman players in the final too. Yeah, that's also true. Yeah, yeah, E-man, a bunch of Eman players in the final. Uh, and uh, yeah, so, and just you know, all the Irish guys that I normally speak to, a lot of the guys in our our servers that we talk to a lot, and obviously the teammates. I'll let you guys go now. Uh, Gib? Oh, uh, so shout out to the disciples, my team as always. You can check our socials, should be linked somewhere here. Show off, and yeah, show it to you guys. It was a fun, fun, fun weekend. Like, even like <laughs> other than winning, it was just like fun to play. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would, I would also say my, my biggest shout that has to go to Cormac and Gib. That was an amazing experience. Uh, we were really fucking like demotivated after round one, but uh, worked out. <laughs> and uh, shout out to Waf as well, obviously, but especially, especially to Ryan Yu, Franco Persano, and Arjun Radhakrishna. They helped us a lot with the deck. We're really fucking yeah. grateful for having them. Uh, they also finished top eight with a dino uh, with a team of three dino decks. Uh, we beat them in top eight. And to be honest. Um, they they helped us a lot with the deck, so I'm I'm really great uh, grateful for them. Um, and otherwise, yeah, just shout out to everyone else in the community. It's been an amazing uh, experience. Alrighty, Gabe, would you like to run through this deck profile with your uh, with your list, the 41 card list? Yeah, I, can, I mean, most of it's like standard Dino stuff, like the main deck. I guess like stuff that's like worth talking about. This has Ash and no draw compared to like some of the previous topping lists. If you got like Christian's list, you got mm-hmm. second Dino. Because we, we figured everyone would be playing around Draw now, if they're playing Dragon Link. And Draw is worse than Ash in the Mirror match. So I'd rather just have a live card in the Mirror match than a card that sometimes works against Dragon Link. And then we like, cut a bit on the hand traps to fit out Mimes. Because since people were cutting Pylon Cube, it just made sense to have Mystic Mine. Because even if Dragon Link like, full combos you, if you open like two copies of Mine, of, like Mine Imper, Mine Ogre Raptor, Mine Pale, you just like win against them. It's so funny. So Mine is just like a win condition. You couldn't not play it. So we reduced a bit of the hand traps, so it's only two imperms to accommodate more mystic mines. And the rest, like general dino stuff, I don't think anything here is like out of the box. That is true. So as part of the uh, main deck for the other two lists, um, what was the difference right there? I mean, I put such rotation. I guess like they had a forty card list with no such rotation, and I wanted to play such rotation, so I just played it as a thirty first. Yeah, uh, me and Cormac decided against set rotation because we figured that like when we were getting Lost World off set rotation, it would be really weird because you'd give them Mystic Mine, and then you'd have to out your own. Myst- you'd have to out the Mystic Mine you gave them eventually, and Mystic Mine is actually kind of a problem for this deck. So it was only realistically really good if like you gave them Lost World and you got another copy of Mystic Mine going second in as combo, for example, which is like understandable. But honestly, in hindsight, I would probably just play the third Mystic Mine instead of Set Rotation and would still not just play Set Rotation because I feel like that card can just not be good in some cases. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Did this affect your uh, performance at all with the Set Rotation game? Uh, no, it's just like a one-off, like a super low impact. It's basically a third copy of mine that can sometimes, if you really need to, get lost from. And it, it's, it's also a mine out in the main deck if they try to deck you out in the dynamic. Yeah, to be honest, that would be a good reason to play it. Be, being yeah. a mine out is probably a really good reason to play it, to be honest. Okay, sweet. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the main deck. Would you guys like to talk about the extra deck? Well, first we can talk about Gabe's extra deck, and then we can swing by and check out the other ones. Okay. So, I should have played what they were playing, which is like Nova Mechabanantis for Invoke Dragma. I-, I messed up on the time of submitting my list, I didn't realize it was that close to submission. So I just told them to submit without it. But it was like a mistake, which definitely should have like the same extra deck that they had. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, like... we were like fearing the Invoke Dragma matchup a bit. So we wanted to have like a sort of an edge. And having Entis Nova means that Whenever they resolve their best card, which is Maximus, you're always going to have some form of advantage generated out of that, which is really good. Yeah. But to I be mean, honest, I feel like, I, I think Gabe played against like what three invoked Dragma and beat yeah. all of them. They never Maximus me as well. Yeah. So. Like w- w- one of the things are like they Maximus one of you guys, and then they saw no Ventus, and then they will never know Maximus me because <laughs> <laughs> they think I'm playing it as well. I guess like the other thing like relevant in the extra deck is Dweller and Tornado. Some people are not playing it in Dinos. Uh, Dweller is so important. Yeah, Dweller is super important for the mirror. Tornado can out your own Mystic Mine. Uh, and it's also relevant to play like around Ice Dragon's Prism. Uh, did you guys miss Giant Rex at all? No, Giant Break. No. We don't play that yeah. card. 
<laughs> like, I, I, you should be winning games before you grind with dinosaur like hex is a card that like it's it's not a starter it's not really an extender it doesn't get you anywhere like i will admit... turn one board slightly stronger so, like... mm, yeah i mean i will admit like the one like sometimes when i'm grinding in the mirror match i'm like oh i'm running out of level four targets to summon from my deck like you just run out of bodies so maybe if the dynamiter match becomes more popular a giant rex is something you can look into but honestly i don't think the card is worth playing based on what it does it would be more important as like just a vanilla if that makes sense <laughs> just play the 2k vanilla one so it doesn't have yeah. <laughs> wow mega lost smasher cormac did you uh did you guys use the same side deck yeah i think yeah we all use uh, the exact same side deck um it, which was i think it was uh really good but i do think in retrospect the, the trap tricks at least playing two of them might have maybe have been uh, incorrect, but that might have also just been influenced by variance because three times during the tournament, uh, I would ha see either Trap Trick plus uh, Ice Dragon's Prison or Ice Dragon's Prison and two Trap Trick in the mirror when we were only siding in like the two prisons and the two Trap Tricks together. So I was just having a bunch of dead cards in my hand. I do think that was a bit more variance than just the statistics, though. Like, uh, the idea was that when you play two Trap Tricks and two copies of each of the Trap Cards is you're playing four copies of them for whatever matchup you need them for. Uh, but I, I think in retrospect, just having three Ice Dragons prison should have been the priority in that side deck originally. Mm -hmm. I think it's like a bit of variance because like the odds of seeing like two two offs together is pretty low. Most of the time, it would be the same thing. So maybe you could play three prison and one trap trick. The main reason I wanted to play uh, two trap trick, four copies of survivals and against Dragon Link whenever I wanted to go first in that matchup, and survivals end is uh, a literal win button in that matchup. So it's yeah. like really good. It's like three interrupt by itself when they make link cross. Yeah. Okay, that's perfect explanation. So, what are you guys' thoughts on the one copy of Call by the Grave? Did it ever like come in clutch? Did it deserve a spot in the side deck? It it won me a couple games. On the <laughs> one copy. Oh, nice. Yeah. I mean, it's because it's it's basically like a nice dragon's prison in the Dino Mirror. So you can side it going first, and when you want to go first against like a combo deck, you also want to take out some hand traps, and Call by is like a better value card. It's just so versatile in the Dino Mirror. It negates Pank, it negates Misk. I think I only drew it once the entire tournament, and it didn't matter. Uh, I, I honestly didn't draw, like, I didn't draw Lightning Storm the entire tournament. I didn't draw DD Crow the entire tournament. It was weird. I didn't see my side deck for the most part. <laughs> well, it worked out. Yeah, it did. Okay, uh, and uh, Cormac, how did the uh, token collectors, like, come in, <clears throat> come into play? Uh, the token collectors were really, really strong in, in the times I needed them, which admittedly wasn't very often. I think I sided them in three times and I saw it once. Uh, but it was against, uh, I think it was against uh, Infernoble. And they sent me first post side. So the idea is that Infernoble sided in to, you know, obviously stop them on the link cross. Uh, but he, he sent me first. But the thing is, when you're going first and you have token collector in your deck, it does technically become a, a form of a consistency card uh, because with a uh, Lost World. So anytime you can see like a normal summon dino, a token collector, and a lost world, uh, you're able to just get access to your engine. And he had a hand trap for the over raptor. Droplet. I'm pretty it sure. Was droplet. Oh, he had, he had droplet for the over raptor, correct? Yeah. But then, but then the lost world spawned a token, which the token collector got to use. And uh, uh, from there, it's just you know got to make a regular board. So the thing is, it's, it's a card that works as interaction, but it also works as a way to access your engine in different ways as well. So it's very versatile. Okay, sweet. And this is a question for everyone. I see that you're playing Duster and two Lightning Storms. Did you guys have any problems with Floodgates at all? Like, did you wish you had a Twin Twister or Cosmic Cyclone? Uh, I, mean, I think it's fine, to be fair. Like, because you're not setting them in the most common matchups. And you already have Pank in the main. So, like, you go to, like, four back row removals. And Dino usually just is pretty good against back row decks. Because you don't care about anything that's not a Floodgate. Because Misk just says, like, no. Uh, so I think this is fine because you need to accommodate like enough hand traps and going first cards. So you had to like cut cut cards somewhere. Yeah, I mean uh, having like the three back removal cards plus like the banker tops, which is kind of a back removal card, was completely fine because it meant that you were only going to see one based on um, maths uh, for deck building. So it was fine. I think it was important to play lightning storm to be honest because. Yeah. If we ended up running into a Guru deck or an Ultra Guys deck or anything like that, which we didn't, thankfully, it would have been really fun, like really uh, painful to deal with. So I think it was important for coverage. Especially for Swiss, because like, you don't know what you're going to play, especially at 3v3. People might just be yeah, playing with your friends. 
So Buster Buster Blader. Buster, Buster Blader. Blader. Guys, yeah. I mean, we should play reboot for Buster Blader at this rate because the, the one deck that beats is Buster <laughs> Blader. It's funny. Yeah, Buster Blader is just insane. <laughs> like that, that deck has such a good matchup against Dino. It's <laughs> so annoying. It's so scary. That's just insane. So uh, yeah, that that's pretty much it. That's yeah, that's the yeah. whole like deck list. Um, again, Hash and Cormac used the same list, which is the forty card version, not playing set rotation, and Gabriel used set rotation. So, in final, any final thoughts, guys, for this whole tournament experience? Thank you to my team. It was really wonderful. I'm really glad we did well. That's all. Oh, so home. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was it was really fun. Like uh, especially like for I think for like well, I mean for all of us, but for people like not uh you know who, not american who like has to like you know watch the 3v3s happen in like you know other countries and stuff like that getting to play this sort of 3v3 type experience was uh was really fun because it was it was a new sort of thing and uh yeah i really hope like stuff like this happens again in the future nice. winning with your team is way more fun for sure yeah very true so there you have it folks and listeners make sure to check out the description down below so we can follow their social media we have uh disciples Eman games and obviously if you're not a part of Bortle nation suffer Bortle. it's that easy and it's free oh god yes Bortle.